thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. True repentance is what the Most High seek from his people. Israelites, the scriptures talk about a period of time in the last days when there will be an awakening among the Israelites. The awakening is supposed to bring the lost sheep of the house of Israel back to the father. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at verse 1, the Most High said, When all of these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse which he has said before our ancestors, not too many Israelites talk about the blessings. The word of the Most High said, when you start to remember the blessings, the curse, and return to the Most High and obey his voice, the Most High said, he will reverse your captivity. And it shall come to pass, for all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee. And thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. The prophesied awakening is a family reunion between the Most High and the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The synagogue of Satan has found a way to infiltrate the awakening. Instead of repentance, love, and mercy, strife, hate, jealousy, and division plague the awakening. That is why I'm starting to believe there is two awakening. The Satans are imitators of everything the Most High does. There are two chosen groups of people, the Israelites and the Jewish people. There are two messiahs, the one that came in the Father's name and the one that came in his own name. If you're familiar with this channel, you will know about duality. The tale series on this channel will help you understand how the Satans use duality to deceive the masses. The synagogue of Satan is imitating the awakening. There's an awakening happening among repented Israelites and Gentiles that have returned to serve the Father. These select individuals are truly seeking the face of the Most High to find out how to serve him in the spirit and in truth. The few that found the narrow road are spending time in the presence of the Most High and establishing a personal relationship with the Father. These individuals are truly working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The other awakening that's imitating the real awakening is filled with Israelites hating themselves and their people. Doctrines of devils plague that awakening, causing confusion. The Israelites in the false awakening continue to obey the same doctrines that held them in bondage. The leaders in the false awakening are constantly fighting each other. The focus in the false awakening is on pride and the idols of the heathens. There is not a difference between the Israelites in the false awakening and the Israelites trapped in religion as well as in the beast system. The sons and daughters of Belial recycle the doctrines of the pagan church and continue with the sin of idolatry. To the Israelites that are on the narrow road that leads to life, the time has come for you to recognize that there is a false awakening happening among us.
You must separate yourselves from that false awakening. Nothing has changed in the false awakening. All the people in that awakening are trapped in religion and continue to be manipulated by the principalities and powers, the dark powers of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Remember, Israelites, you wrestle not with flesh and blood. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Open Diary will forever stand apart from the beast system and its various religion and continue in the word of the Most High uncovering truth. Everything written will be fulfilled and everything done in secret will manifest. Obedience is what the Most High want from his people. If the Israelites and all of the seed of Adam were serving the Most High in the spirit and in truth, the Most High wouldn't call you out of religion. The Most High wouldn't warn you about the gods of wood and stone made with man's hands that many Israelites and their children bow down and worship in the land of their captivity. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. Israelites, beware of the false awakening. As we uncover truth, we must mature and grow spiritually. Now that you know the everlasting covenant the Most High made with us is not void, now that you know you must worship and serve the Father like the Messiah in the scriptures said, Israelites, now you must understand why the Most High chose the Israelite bloodline. The Most High made a covenant with Adam to save him and his seed. This covenant stands until this day. Before Adam transitioned, he talked with his son Seth and revealed to Seth everything he needed to know to live a life that would grant him and his children salvation. Adam had knowledge of who would uphold the covenant. Adam gave Seth the commandments and Adam said to Seth, give the commandments to Enos, Canaan, and Mahalalel, Seth's sons. Then our father Adam blessed them all and said to Seth after he had blessed them, O Seth, my son, thou knowest this world that it is full of sorrow and of weariness, and thou knowest all that has come upon us from our trials in it. I therefore now command thee in these words to keep innocency, to be pure and just, and trusting in God, and lean not to the discourse of Satan, nor to the operations in which he will show himself to thee. But keep the commandments that I give thee this day, then give the same to thy son Enos, and let Enos give it to his son Canaan, and Canaan to his son Mahalalel, so that this commandment abide firm among all your children. Every generation had a person chosen to lead. Remember in the beginning, the world's population is not what it is today, especially during the time of Adam and the righteous in his generation. Adam was the first to lead. After Adam came Seth, Enos, Jared, Enoch, Noah, Shem, and many others before Abraham. Before the Messiah came to fulfill everything written about him, salvation was given to Adam and all of his seed. Everyone who was righteous and descend from Adam, the Most High granted them salvation. The Most High sent his word, the anointed one, to speak with Seth to confirm the covenant he made with Adam. And when they had ended their offering, the word of God came to Seth, the eldest among them, saying unto him, O Seth, 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 three times, as I was with thy father, so also shall I be with thee until the fulfillment of the promise I made him thy father, saying, I will send my word and save thee and thy seed. But as to thy father Adam, Keep thou the commandment he gave thee, and sever thy seed from that of Cain thy brother. Notice the Most High said to Seth that he would be with him until the fulfillment of the promise. He went on to say, I will save you and your seed. Remember, the Messiah have yet to come. However, Adam and Seth both are aware that the Most High granted them and their seed salvation. Fast forward to today, religion say something else. Never did the Most High say to Adam, your seed must believe in a Messiah. The Most High said to Adam, I will save you and the righteous of your seed. The Most High went on to encourage them to keep the commandments. Seth blessed Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, 
Jared, and Enoch before his death. After the death of Seth, Enos, the son of Seth, led his people. Then Enos, his firstborn son, came to him with Canaan, his son, and Mahalalel, Canaan's son, and Jared, the son of Mahalalel, and Enoch, Jared's son, with their wives and children to receive a blessing from Seth. Then Seth prayed over them and blessed them and adjured them by the blood of Abel, the just, saying, I beg of you, my children, not to let one of you go down from this holy and pure mountain. After the death of Seth, Enos rose at the head of his people, whom he fed in righteousness and judgment, as his father had commanded him. Enos was chosen to lead the people and to uphold the covenant. Everyone that was chosen to lead Adam's descendants had to teach the people how to uphold the commandments the Most High gave to Adam. The people followed the leaders on how to serve the Most High and uphold his commandments. Like we learn in the testaments of our fathers, the patriarchs to the 12 tribes, everyone who was chosen gathered their children to them to bless them and pass down the laws of the Most High to the next generation. In addition, they set expectations for their children after them. After Enos transitioned to the afterlife, Canaan, the son of Enos, became the head of the people to lead them in righteousness. After the death of Enos, Canaan stood at the head of his people in righteousness and innocency. As his father had commanded him, he also continued to minister before the body of Adam inside the cave of treasures. Righteousness is found in keeping the laws of the Most High. The laws of the Most High reveal to us what is good and what is bad. From the time of Adam, the first man, until this day, the Most High never abolished his laws. The heathens and their nations have many laws. Not once have they abolished their laws. They expect everyone residing in their nations to follow the laws of the land. The synagogue of Satan managed to get the people of the Most High to forsake the laws of the Most High in religion. The high-level workers of iniquity in religion told them the laws are done away with and the Messiah that came in his own name abolished the laws. No wonder the curses plague our lives. If you want to be righteous, you must uphold the laws of the Most High, as well as the commandments and statutes he gave to our people. After Canaan transition, the Most High selected Mahalalel as the chosen one to lead the people in righteousness. Mahalalel, his firstborn son, received this commandment from his father who blessed him and died. Then Mahalalel stood over his people and fed them in righteousness and innocency and watched them to see they held no intercourse with the children of Cain. Israelites, I hope you're beginning to understand your role as the chosen people of the Most High. You were chosen to lead all of Adam's descendants in righteousness, just like the fathers in the beginning did before they transitioned to the afterlife. So far from all the fathers that were chosen, all of them led the people in righteousness. After Mahalalel transitioned to the afterlife, his son Jared was chosen to lead his generation in righteousness. Then Jared kept his father's commandment and arose like a lion over his people. He fed them in righteousness and innocency and commanded them to do nothing without his counsel, for he was afraid concerning them, lest they should go to the children of Cain. By now, everyone who watch and follow this channel are aware of what took place during the time of Jared. For those who are new, during the time of Jared is when an infiltration took place in the womb of the daughters of men. It was during the time of Jared, the sons of God, the watchers, took an oath to procreate with the daughters of men. This is the origin to the other species of mankind. The beast system is silent about their beginnings. Many of them swear they don't descend from black people. The Bible reveal where they come from. The children of the watchers are not descendants of Adam, nor was salvation given to them. The lake of fire is their final place. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descend in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. 
and they call it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. Enoch, thou scribe of righteousness, go, declare to the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace, nor forgiveness of sin, inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children. And Enoch went and said, Azazel, thou shalt have no peace. A severe sentence has gone forth against thee to put thee in bounds, and thou shalt not have a toleration nor request granted to thee, because of the unrighteousness which I has taught, and because of all the works of godlessness and unrighteousness and sin which thou hast shown to men, then I went and spoke to them all together, and they were all afraid, and fear and trembling seized them. But Satan, the hater of all good, thought within himself, whereas God has promised salvation to Adam by covenant, and that he would deliver him out of all the hardship that have befallen him, but has not promised me by covenant, and will not deliver me out of my hardship. Nay, since he has promised him that he should make him and his seed dwell in the kingdom in which I once was, I will kill Adam. Salvation was not given to the seed of the fallen. Religion lie when they say salvation was given to all. Salvation was given to the seed of Adam only. Everyone is not of the seed of Adam. The scripture said the giants walked the earth before and after the flood. The seed of the fallen infiltrated many animals to keep their lineage going. Today, we know them as the Neanderthal. There's a lot of people walking around with Neanderthal DNA. The Neanderthal DNA is found in the other species of mankind and all of its subspecies. They swear we are all the same. We're not the same. Enoch was chosen to lead the people after his father Jared died. Enoch, the son of Jared, is the same Enoch the Most High took. He is the same Enoch that have written many books. Give them the books of the handwriting, and they will read them and will know me for the creator of all things, and will understand how there is no other God but me. And let them distribute the books of thy handwriting, children to children, generation to generation, nations to nations. The synagogue of Satan convinced many to ignore the book of Enoch. Many Israelites and indigenous black people obey the voice of the people they follow. So many ignore the book of Enoch, yet the scriptures in the Bible talk about him. The book of Genesis confirm his existence, yet so many slander the writings of Enoch. The reason the writings from Enoch is highly discredited Enoch exposed the origin to the other species of mankind. The synagogue of Satan don't want you to know the origin to the other species of mankind. They don't want you to connect them to the Nephthalims, the sons of the fallen watchers. And Jared lived an hundred sixty and two years, and he begat Enoch. Before Jared transitioned, he blessed Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah. He blessed them and gave them instructions on what to do with the body of Adam. He instructed them to bury Adam in the middle of the earth. He also commanded them to uphold the commandments of the Most High and not to depart from the holy mountain. Jared also made them aware of the flood. When Noah asked who would be left after the flood, Jared said to Noah he was chosen and his son Shem would bury Adam in the middle of the earth. And Jared answered, Thou art he that shall be left, and thou shalt take the body of our father Adam from the cave, and place it with thee in the ark when the flood comes. And thy son Shem, who shall come out of thy loin, he it is who shall lay the body of our father Adam in the middle of the earth, in the place when salvation shall come. After Jared died, Enoch was chosen to lead the people. Then Jared turned to his son Enoch and said unto him, Thou, my son, abide in this cave and minister diligently before the body of our father Adam all the days of thy life and feed thy people in righteousness and innocency. 
Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, and Noah prayed to the Most High and asked the Most High to preserve them and to bring them out of that wicked generation. Enoch ministered for 385 years. Enoch instructed his people before the Most High took him. All of the children of Cain died in the flood, as well as all the disobedient children of Seth. After the flood, Noah and his family was chosen. The Most High made a covenant with Noah and his sons to repopulate the earth. Anyone who is of the seed of Adam descend from one of Noah's sons, making all of us who descend from Adam relatives. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The Most High started over with Noah and his family. The Most High cleansed the earth from the sinners at that time. Noah and his family were chosen to uphold the covenant the Most High made with Adam. The covenant the Most High made with Noah revealed that he made a covenant with Noah, his sons, and their seed. The Most High also made a covenant with all the living creatures that was with Noah, all the animals that was in the ark with Noah and his family. And God spake unto Noah, and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you, and with your seed after you. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. The covenant the Most High made with Noah was a covenant between the Most High and all flesh. When I say all flesh, all of Adam's seed and the animals. The rainbow is a symbol of that covenant. Today, the alphabet community pollute the token of the everlasting covenant the Most High made with all flesh. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. The book of Genesis chapter 9 will give you all the details about the covenant the Most High made with Noah and his sons. So far, Noah and his sons had the covenant of salvation and the everlasting covenant he made with Noah and his sons of not destroying the earth with water. The rainbow is a symbol of that covenant. Out of Shem came a man named Abram. Abram was chosen by the Most High to uphold the covenant of salvation given to Adam as well as the everlasting covenant the Most High made with Noah and all flesh. Besides those two covenants, the Most High made several other covenants with Abram. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. In the covenant the Most High made with Abram, he told him to leave the country he resided in to go to another land the Most High would show him. The Most High promised Abram that he would make him a great nation. The Most High said to Abram, from him, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Israelites, make sure you remember the part the Most High said to Abram, all the families of the earth will be blessed through him. After Abram left his father's house in Haran, when Abram reached the land of Canaan, the Most High said to him, to your seed, I will give this land. 
And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moray. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram, and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. The Most High showed Abram the land he will give to his seed. The Most High also said to Abram that he would have a son. The covenant the Most High made with Abram at that time said he would give him the land of Canaan for a possession and all the families of the earth would be blessed. The Most High appeared to Abram again and made another covenant with him. This time the Most High said to Abram that he would make him a father to many nations. The Most High changed his name to Abraham. Now the Most High said to Abraham, kings will come from him. He will make him fruitful. Lastly, he said he would be a God to him and his seed. The Most High established an everlasting covenant with Abraham. And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man-child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. The token the Most High made with Abraham to establish the everlasting covenant Abraham and all of his seed shall be circumcised. When the Most High established an everlasting covenant with Noah and his sons, the rainbow was the token. Around this time, the children of Shem, Ham, and Japheth were worshiping idols. In the book of Jubilees, the sons of Noah complained to their father Noah about the unclean spirits misleading their children. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make to error and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his son's sons. And he prayed before the Lord his God and said, God of the spirits of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me, and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, and has not caused me to perish as thou didst the sons of perdition. For thy grace has been great towards me, and great has been thy mercy to my soul. Let thy grace be lifted up upon my sons, and let not wicked spirits rule over them, lest they should destroy them from the earth. But do thou bless me and my sons, that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth, and thou knowest how thy watchers, the fathers of these spirits, acted in my day. And as for these spirits which are living, imprison them and hold them fast in a place of condemnation. And let them not bring destruction on the sons of thy servant, my God. For these are malignant and created in order to destroy. By the time the Most High made a covenant with Abraham, there were many bloodlines formed. The sons and daughters of Shem, Ham, and Japheth were multiplying. Every bloodline served their gods. When the Most High made the final covenant with Abraham, he said he would be a god to him and his descendants after him. The Most High chose Abraham's descendants to be a god too. Later on, 
the Most High transferred the covenant he made with Abraham to Isaac, his son. After Isaac to Jacob, the son of Isaac. After Jacob, the Most High transferred the everlasting covenant to Jacob's descendants, who are known as the Israelites, the chosen people. The Most High chose the Israelites to be a set-apart people. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. Why did the Most High choose you, Israelites? The Most High chose the Israelites to fulfill the covenant he made with their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Most High also chose the Israelites to be a set-apart people to use for his purpose. Remember earlier in the message, I said, remember the part in the covenant the Most High made with Abraham that said, through him, all the families in the earth would be blessed. That is your purpose, Israelites. You were chosen to uphold the covenant, as well as to display the righteousness of the Most High. All the fathers before you in this message uphold the covenant in righteousness. They all led the people in righteousness. Your role as the chosen people is to live a life that will cause the other descendants of Adam to remember the Most High and serve him in the spirit and in truth. The way all the families of this earth will be blessed by you upholding the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High. The law was transferred to you, no other nation but to you. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. Go say to them, get you into your tents again. But as for thee, stand thou here by me, and I will speak unto thee all the commandments and the statutes and the judgments, which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do therefore as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. The book of Amos in the Bible said, You only of all the families on this earth that I know. The Most High know his chosen people, and he gave his chosen people the job of teaching the other indigenous bloodlines that descend from Adam his statutes, commandments, and laws. Today, foreigners are teaching the world about the laws of the Most High. Because these foreigners don't know the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, religion was established to place the seed of Adam in bondage. Israelites, you are responsible to teach the nations. As the peculiar people of the Most High, we were chosen to display the righteousness of the Most High. When a person from the bloodline of Japheth, Ham, and Shem see how we're living, they would say, wow. These people are a mighty people of the Most High. The scripture said, By their fruits you will know a person. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Israelites, if your behavior and the fruit you're producing is rotten, how many people will follow you? No one will follow you. They will say, look at them. Look at their life. These people expect me to follow them and their God. What kind of God are they serving? Israelites, you know the indigenous black people are famous for speaking that way. Many Israelites have been rejected by their family members and friends because the fruits they are producing does not bring forth the kind of righteousness the most high desire. Therefore, their friends and family reject the truth in the awakening. Jacob, our father, served the most high with all of his heart. He uphold the statutes, commandments, and laws. Because of his faithfulness towards the Most High, the Most High made Jacob's enemies afraid of him. In the testament of Joseph, when the Ishmaelites found out that Joseph was a son of Jacob, they feared for their life because they knew Jacob was a mighty man of the Most High. Now after four and twenty days came the Ishmaelites, for they had heard that Jacob my father was mourning much concerning me. And they came and said unto me, How is it that thou sayest that thou was a slave? And lo, we have learnt that thou art the son of a mighty man in the land of Canaan, and thy father still mourneth for thee in sackcloth and ashes. For they feared my father, lest he should come and execute upon them a grievous vengeance, for they had heard that he was mighty with God and with men. 
Israelites, does your adversaries fear you? So far, your adversaries laugh in your face. The other descendants of Adam don't believe a word that come out of your mouths because the fruits this generation is producing in the awakening is rotten. Due to the poor example the Israelites in the false awakening set, many people want nothing to do with the awakening. They see all the strife, hate, confusion, division, and manipulation. The descendants of Adam from the other nations are rejecting the awakening. Some say there's no difference between the awakening and the beast culture. Meanwhile, the workers of iniquity are shadow banning the true people in the real awakening that are displaying the righteousness the Most High is pleased with. The Most High call his people out of darkness into his marvelous light for his people to show the praises of him. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. How many of you are producing the kind of righteousness the Most High desire? Israelites, you were chosen to be a good example to the other nations. The scripture said a light to the world. Through you, the other nations would know the statutes and commandments of the Most High. The Most High chose you so he can work through you. However, throughout the Israelite generations, they failed to uphold the statutes and commandments of the Most High. The Israelites have turned to other gods, false gods that do everything for them and all they have to do is believe. The chosen people are the salt of the earth that have lost its taste. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have but lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Instead of the Israelites teaching the Gentiles and strangers, the workers of iniquity are teaching the people. Instead of bringing back righteousness in the awakening, the Israelites are reciting the doctrines of devils from religion in the awakening. Israelites, despite of our failure to uphold the kind of righteousness the Most High is pleased with, every day that you wake up, the Most High is giving you an opportunity to change your life by obeying the word of the Most High and upholding the statutes and commandments of the Most High. We are supposed to be the reflection of the Most High. Is your reflection a sight the Most High will be pleased with? But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Israelites, there is more to being chosen. You have work to do. The indigenous black people that are lost in the beast system will never find the true creator. They have to look to the Israelites to find him. Religion is sorcery and the Most High is not in the beast system or their religion. That is why it is important to be the best version of yourself. You may think people are not watching you, but they are. You influence many. Israelites, the covenant the Most High made with us, he will fulfill them. Everything written will come to pass. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The Most High promised to gather his people, the Israelites. The Most High promised to save his people and all of the righteous seed of Adam. He will do exactly what he promised at the appointed time. Israelites, do not let religion and the workers of iniquity deceive you into believing that you're only here to follow the Son of God that is made in the image of the fallen angels. You have a job to do, all of the descendants of Jacob. If the end don't come before we transition, we will become the ancestors. What will the generations living after us will say about our generation? Are they going to complain about us being stiff-necked and rebellious? Our generation complain about our ancestors and their rebellious ways. So did the generations before us complain about the ancestors. Our fathers have sinned and are not, and we have borne their iniquities. Will the generations after us say, Blessed be our fathers and mothers for repenting and returning to the Most High? We must live a life that set good examples for many generations. Reciting the doctrines of Rome is not going to save our lives. You must know the covenants and what the covenants say. The Most High will fulfill His covenants. 
Israelites, do not let the spirit of pride and ego deceive you. Draw near to the Most High so he can draw near to you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. When I say, draw near to the Most High, I am boldly speaking about the Father. The Most High's desire is for his people to serve him in the spirit and in truth. Religion said, you must believe in the Son to have salvation. Israelites, the Messiah in the book of John said, you didn't choose him. He chose you. The Most High appointed you to do his will. The Messiah said he chose you to bring forth fruits. The Messiah went on to say, whatever you ask the Father, let me repeat, the Father. The Messiah said for you to go to the Father in prayer, not him, but the Father. Whatever you ask the Father in his name, he may give to you. Everyone who is of Jacob's seed did not choose the Most High, but the Most High chose you. Remember that. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Israelites, there is more to being called. There is more to being chosen. Simply waiting on the Messiah to deliver you is not all that is required of you. You have a job. The other nations have accepted and serve a false version of the Father in the beast religion and the false awakening. The other nations don't know the Father, nor does the Israelites in the false awakening and religion. The remnant that is called after the Father know him. They will uphold the kind of righteousness the Most High desire. The remnant is not following trends, but setting them. The fathers who were chosen before us truly love the Most High and their descendants. That is why the Most High used them mightily. Our fathers who were chosen, they desire for all of their children to be saved. I hope the remnant in this generation share the same compassion for the next generations. Too many Israelites in this generation are playing with the Most High. If you fear the Most High, you would humble yourself. To the Israelites on the narrow road to life, the Most High wanted you to know your purpose. The world doesn't know him. The only way they will know the Most High is through you. We are the generation chosen to return to the Father. To the remnant, who knows if you were called to the kingdom for such a time like this. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. <laughs>